it's hard for you to hit bed. Okay? He made you try to hold my wrist with this hand here. It's awkward. Okay? Even if you try to go this leg, look, over. If you go the leg over, it's better because if you make you grab look at his arm. The good thing about controlling just uh, head and arm is because it's hard for you to lift him. You will just lose your head. He said, look at him. Stay silent. Now you need to bring his head, okay? His head between his legs. Okay, so you're gonna squeeze with your shoulder over his head, and then you're gonna contract your lat. Man, I'm, pu I'm pulling for Dustin, for uh, Justin, for sure. He's just fighting a little bit too often. I'd like for him to take some time, a little bit of time off, rest up a little bit, reset. I'd like to see that happen. Um, sometimes you get rejuvenated, come back with a different energy, and everybody go on a run. But um, you know, with J Vic, just looks like a like the size difference, uh, the length would be a little bit uh, tough to deal with, maybe. Because uh, Justin does take shots, but if Justin starts popping them leg kicks, man, it's gonna be a long night. I felt them. You don't get out of round like it's gonna be tough to get out of round two, round three, when he starts when he starts letting them off. So it's a pick 'em. Suggested about Conor McGregor that he puts in the right time and does the right conditioning work even though sometimes his cardio will abandon him on fight night. And then maybe, maybe metabol me metabolically, Kenny, or biologically, uh, he just doesn't necessarily have it in him to be this just elite cardio guy in the 24th minute of a championship fight. I, I don't know if you can lend any insight on that, but in terms of the conditioning battle, do you think it is decided advantage, Nurmago Medal? Well, I do because we know what Habib wants to do. Habib wants to go out there and wrestle. He wants to go out there and grind Conor McGregor down like he has done 24, 25 times previously as a pro. So, um, yeah, I think that dealing with that uh, is, is not going to be easy for Conor McGregor. Uh, however, I, I think Conor is going to be quicker. Uh, he's going to be way better with his footwork. He's going to be faster on his feet. He's going to have faster hands and faster strikes. Uh, but he, Habib doesn't want to do that. Habib's going to go uh, and wrestle. I, I think a lot of people kind of saw that fight against Ali Quinta and go, oh, well, he's going to do that. He's not going to... He's going to go and try to do that same thing and try to strike with Conor McGregor. He is not going to do that. He's going to take the same approach he did against a guy like Edson Barbosa, for example, and, and repeatedly take him down and try to pound his head into the canvas. That's what Habib right. does best, and that's what he better do against Conor McGregor if he does decide to strike or if he does, for some reason, not have a lot of success with his takedowns. That's when you start to get frustrated, and I think that... That conditioning factor, I think, is directly related to the kind of mental anguish or the kind of pressure that you're dealing with on fight night. How many times have I seen a fighter on, uh, in, the, in the training room look fantastic? They're doing five rounds plus, and, they, and they're not even tired. That same fighter goes in in a three-round fight in the UFC, and they are exhausted after one round. How does that happen? Because of the mental pressure that they're feeling on fight night. There's so much tension in their body. And I got to say, no one releases that tension better than a Conor McGregor. I think Conor McGregor and John Jones, as far as competitors, getting rid yeah. of that pressure, getting rid of that um, you know, tension. I don't think there's any, any competitors that do it better than those guys, really. Yeah. Um, uh, of being, of just kind of phasing out uh, the lights, the audience, the crowd, the referee, uh, the magnitude of the fight, and just goes out there and competes extremely well. Uh, and Conor McGregor is coming off one of the biggest combat sports event in history against Floyd Mayweather. Right. So he's he's been there. He's he's done that. Um, Habib doesn't quite have that same kind of experience. But again, for Habib, right. he's a very mentally strong individual.
he's got to come back. He's got to come back soon. And from the pictures I've seen and the footage I've seen, he's, it looks like he's going to come back as a heavyweight. Yeah, it does. He, he looks huge. I, I've seen him in a couple of photos. It looks like he's been uh, on the strength and conditioning. And, and, you know, because he's not been making weight, he's not had to make weight, he's, he's allowed his body to grow a little bit. I, I think he's going to, going to hit a lot harder, and that's a scary thing. Well, that means he could be fighting. I mean, this is the rumour. Everyone's talking about it. UFC 230 in New York, which is what? November the 3rd, is that right? Yeah. I think is the date. Because um, he put, I mean, the problem he's got is the fact that he's not been in the testing pool. But he, he tweeted this. Glad you enjoyed the few seconds of training footage I shared the other day. Just wanted to let everyone know I never left the testing pool, not even for a day. Nick, this means that if he never left left the testing pool, theoretically, he could be back in November. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and... You know, again, I would—I certainly wouldn't gamble against it. What the UFC right reads right now is, is pay-per-view driving superstars, and I think John Jones over the years has proved himself. You know, I've, I've been on record many times thinking he's the saying he's the uh, he's the best that's ever done it, and I truly believe that. Um, but it obviously comes with an asterisk now. The asterisk is is, is he he's the best that ever done it, but he wasn't a clean athlete. Um, so he joins the same kind of roster as the likes of Anderson Silva, who, who you'd also put in the goat list, but have also failed for pharmaceutical reasons. But uh, listen. I just want to see him back. The sport needs him. We need him as fans. And you know what? I just want him to come back as the heel. I've been pushing from this from the get-go. Stop trying to present John Jones as being holier than thou. They're not just anymore, present him they? as the way he is. No he is the Mike Tyson of MMA. Just let him do it. His management team constantly try and do that. Constantly say, he's back. He's going to do this. He's a pillar of the community. And, and John t- tries to say these stupid rehearsed things. Just come back and be who you are. You're the bad boy. You know, the the thing is, and we're seeing this with the McGregor build-up as well with, with the Khabib fight, like people gravitate towards towards people that fail and then pick themselves up and, and try again. You know, everyone needs everyone needs to show a bit of vulnerability to be popular, I think, in this sport. And I think John Jones, is, he's not showing that vulnerability in his fights, but if he can show that vulnerability in his personal life, it makes him a little more human. I think people gravitate towards him. And I think we all understand and appreciate what money does to a young man. And the, the amount of fame and money that John Jones had arrived at at a young age, it, it was going to do do things to him because he'd not, you know, not yet got that old head on his shoulders. Well, Justin, coming into this fight, there seems to have been a little bit of smack talk uh, between you and your opponent. Is sometimes that can be manufactured. Sometimes that can be hype. Is this genuine? Do you really dislike this guy? Yeah, I can't wait to knock him out. Um, make him pay for every single word that's come out of his mouth. Yeah. I don't like the guy. I didn't like him before I wasn't before I was fighting him. So, yeah, I don't respect the game he plays, uh, the fight he fights. So he's a, he's a very tall fighter, the tallest in the division. Have you brought anyone to in to emulate that lankiness of James? Sick? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been training with a lot of 170 and 185 pounders. Uh, they're not going to find a lot of 155 pounders that are six three. So I'm gonna go out there. Um, you know he. He's 6'3", he has to have fragile bones. So I'm going to go out there and make my bones touch his bones and then see who's the stronger. You know, going into the, your last two fights, has there been anything different about the approach to this one? Uh, but at the end of the day, no. I mean, it's all cardio. I go in there and, you know, my timing's on point. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident in this fight. I'm confident that I can break James. I'm confident that he can't withstand uh, the onslaught that I'm going to bring to him. And, yeah, it's going to be fun. Do you intend to use your ground game more in this one than you have in the last two? I have no idea. Um, time will tell. <laughs> 